Hey everyone and welcome back. A piece of machinery I've been wanting to get my hands on for a long time is a die filer or a benchtop filing machine. Now these machines are perfect for precision filing and when you really need the cut to be perfectly square. Unfortunately though, whilst these machines used to be common, they aren't commercially available and haven't been for a very long time. Now I am aware they are sold as a kit which you make from cast iron castings, but the cost of freight to my part of the world really puts this option out of my budget for the moment. However, it should be pretty simple to make one in-house using what I can locally source using a modest budget. I drew up a basic design in CAD to use as a reference for this project. So let's get started. The first thing I'll machine is the base. It's a 150 by 30 mil piece of grey cast iron. Not only does it provide a lot of mass for the base, but it should dampen vibrations when in use. The faces are in pretty rough shape, so they will need a facing cut on the mill. The part was a little bit large for my vise, so I made a very quick clamp down kit using some spare mild steel, and it does the job just fine. I used my fly cutter to face down the cast iron, and to be honest, I wasn't blown away by the surface finish. I get a really decent result in mild steel, but this insert just isn't made for cast iron. I rarely machine cast iron outside of drilling it, but next time I'll be sure to order some inserts made specifically for machining it. Now at this point, I was going to leave the top surface as it was. I actually really liked the surface texture, but due to a mistake on my behalf coming up, I will have to go back and remachine it. I mounted the cast iron vertically in order to machine a slot for the vertical column. And even before I started, I knew I was really pushing it with this small vise in this setup. And here's the mistake I was talking about. The vise was really too small, not enough pressure, and the end mill pulled the workpiece into the cutter. 100% avoidable, and I really should have known better, but I guess live and learn. With the slot cut, I went ahead and drilled three holes which will eventually become the mounting holes to bolt the vertical support to the base. The holes were then tapped for M8, and a compact tap holder really comes in handy in situations like this. With the holes tapped, I'll leave the base for the moment, though it certainly isn't finished yet. I'll be making the vertical column from a piece of hot rolled steel. The piece was cut off and the end squared in the mill. The hot rolled steel isn't perfectly square, the ends having a bowed out convex shape, so they'll be taken down with the fly cutter. Whilst I was at it, I also faced the top and the bottom.
Off camera, I marked the position of the screw holes and I drilled each one and gave them a counterbore for a cap head screw. Now I don't have an M8 counterbore tool on hand, so a twist drill will have to do. The drilling kicks up a small burr, which I'll remove with a DIY deburr tool. The cap head screws are off the shelf components, but they do need a little bit of machining done. I mounted them in a vise and I cut some extra threads with a tap and die. I then reduced the head's diameter by 1mm so they would fit into the counter bore. The part was then bolted to the cast iron base. It feels very solid and a square indicates that they are perpendicular, though I will need to verify it using a dial indicator and the mill. I'm happy with the progress so far, so I'll lay out the rest of the piece for the holes that I need to drill. The first hole will have a plain bearing for a shaft that will drive the die filer. Without a boring head on hand, I'll make the hole using a 5 8 inch silver and deming bit. I've reground it to try and help the mill cut through mild steel, and it really is a lot to ask of this machine, but the hole is eventually drilled. The next hole will be a mounting hole for the top table mount, and it will be tapped for M8. The final two holes will be used for a horizontal plate that will house a plane bearing. And like the holes beforehand, it will need a 12mm counterbore. The top hole was tapped and then the whole part was given a deburr. It was given a clean up and that's the part sorted for the moment. Next, I'll create the horizontal support piece. It was cut from the same stock and faced to give the same dimensions as the vertical piece. Now this part only requires three holes. One on the top face and two on the back. The hole on the top is drilled for a 5 8 inch hole for a plane bearing. The two back holes were drilled and then tapped for M8. The holes will be used to fasten this piece to the vertical support. And that's the part finished for the moment. Next I'll quickly machine up some plane bearings. For the moment I've opted to use some 20mm brass. Now I know that I should have gone with a bearing bronze, but cost and availability meant I had to settle for this. In a pinch it will work for the time being, though they will need replacing in time. Now the shaft that I'm using measures out to being half an inch. And normally you'd want to use a reamer to get the hole to the correct size. But I just couldn't source one locally, so I resorted to boring the hole to size using a boring bar. It's not the perfect insert for the job, but it works really well and it leaves a decent finish. And whilst I was making one, I might as well make up the other two. The final thing left to do is machine a 5 8 inch hole in the centre of the cast iron.
Finally, let's assemble what we have here. The back is bolted to the cast iron, and the horizontal piece is bolted to the vertical piece. Finally, the brass bushings are dropped into place. Later they will be fixed into place, but for the moment, they should be fine. And so far, it's looking pretty good. I'm very impressed with the parts that I've made, and I'm pretty happy with them. Now I know there is a lot more work to do, but that's all I have for the moment. I hope you really enjoyed this video, and learned something new. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part 2.